let's get across uh, to the Wipro management. We have uh, Abid Ali Neemchawala, Jatin Dalal and Saurabh Govil all with us. Uh, gentlemen, I appreciate you joining in. Uh, you know, my first question as always is to Abid. Uh, Abid, a big concern and uh, analysts, uh, investors, journalists have asked you this question. But help me understand the guidance uh, for the second quarter. By the looks of it, it's a fairly flattish quarter. You said that uh, there have been some changes with respect to the run side of the business. Break up the kind of uh, outlook that you're expecting. Where is the sluggishness expected to come in from? So first of all, Ritika, thank you for having us on the program. And uh, the guidance, as you know, is a, a forecast of the revenues that we see at a point in time when we give the guidance. And that is what we see right now in growth terms. And just to give you a sense of where we are, you know, the overall technology spent with most of our clients is not significantly increasing. But what is happening that I mentioned earlier, which you referred to, is the run spent is moving into the digital transformation spend. So we see a certain level of uh, pressure on the run side as they drive productivity. And uh, on the digital side, we are seeing a lot of deals. We, we see very bullish about the demand over there, but the deal sizes are relatively smaller. Although last quarter we signed one large deal, uh, and as the digital deals start becoming bigger, uh, the, the, the revenue reduction that happens on the run side due to productivity will be more than compensated by the digital side uh, as the deals become bigger and that is what uh, will give incremental growth uh, at the right levels. So how long would that take? Uh, say two to three quarters till when we actually see uh, the transition period ending and actual impact of the digital services coming in? Can we say two, two to three quarters? We've not given timelines. I'm already starting to see deals uh, in that front. And then, you know, there is a Wipro-specific transformation that mm -hmm. strategically we are doing within the organization in terms of increasing the level of mining, increasing our localization, apart from driving digital Wipro Homes platform, which is the artificial intelligence platform for which we are seeing very good traction. Our robotic automation, which helps us with uh, a margin improvement and driving a cost point which uh, delivers us margins in spite of the commoditization of services and a, a high level of localization in markets uh, where we do business and so all of these are part of the strategy that we are executing and all of this put together at different times will start kicking in and mm. definitely you will see an uptick in the growth numbers. Okay, so possibly by next quarter we should see that uh, that impact. But uh, Abed, before I go across to uh, Jatin to go into the fine print, uh, by when can we say that Wipro will be back to industry-leading growth rates? Give us a timeline because the market has been waiting for blockbuster numbers. Uh, yes, it's a difficult market. Yes, there are seasonal headwinds. But by when can we say that Wipro will be back to uh, uh, industry-leading positive performance? So, Ritika, I remember last quarter when we spoke, uh, you gave a timeline and I didn't so know about it. So, I would stay with that. So, what? Give me a rough timeline in that case. Uh, what is the rough timeline that you're working with? A any transformation of this kind takes a few quarters and, you know, but uh, you don't have to wait for all of those quarters to get over before you see the first signs. So, you start seeing certain uh, signals, you start seeing certain... Uh, uptake and then uh, you know the um, obviously what I say as a turnaround is when we are in line with uh, uh, the ambition that we have put out uh, and that we've g given very clearly as 15 billion dollars by 2020 hmm. so that will take definitely a longer time for us to get to that trajectory but uh, early signs uh, start getting visible uh, uh, in the next few quarters in the next few quarters uh, how many quarters is that up with I, again, as I said, we've not publicly given any timeline, so I can't give uh, okay. you the numbers. But, but, but can but, we say uh, by the end of this fiscal, the there time. will be some more clarity and better visibility then? Absolutely. That's what I said uh, last time when you had asked me this question, and I, again, don't deny what you said.
Okay, fair enough. We'll go by what I had asked you last uh, quarter then. But uh, Jatin, coming to you, uh, margins have been very sluggish in this quarter. You've had the impact of wage hikes, you've had the impact of acquisitions, you've had the impact of some amount of uh, low profitability coming in from India and Middle East as well, uh, from what you uh, pointed out in the press conference. But uh, with many of these factors uh, missing in the coming quarters, uh, will you expect uh, some more upside? Will you have more visibility in terms of margins? in the next quarter? So, Ritika, the overall context is that uh, we had to uh, make a choice and we have made a choice and we talked about it in the beginning of quarter one mm -hmm. that we will make investments for, uh, for securing our future. And I think in variety of ways we have done it. Uh, one has been uh, the investment in acquisitions uh, which does dilute margin in a, in a short term but it is something that uh, gives us a tremendous uh, opportunity in business process as a service uh, model that we did for health plan services. Similarly, we have invested in form of salary increase in some of the high, uh, high expertise uh, workforce that we have hired in quarter one. Uh, that is the second angle. Uh, of course, there is, a, uh, there, is a, there is a lower profitability India Middle East business because we were doing some restructuring. And also, we have invested in certain client relationships where we believe that it is important to stay with the customer, increase CSAT, and, and grow a relationship from a volume standpoint, and we can catch up on our margins as we go. So, uh, so this is the context of Q1. Now, as we look forward, fundamentally, we have two-month salary impact, which is still to come in, and uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will need to work through, mitigate uh, it as we go forward. And, uh, uh, but the good news is that apart from that, there is for the rest of the year, there is no other large visible known uh, cost impact. So our endeavor would be that uh, in quarter two, we mitigate a substantial portion mm -hmm. of the headwind that we are seeing uh, ahead of us uh, and work through for the rest of the quarters on improving the margin trajectory. How long, Jatin, do you expect the impact or the sluggishness in the India and Middle East of market to remain? So we are undergoing a, a, a business relook, uh, uh, restructuring focused uh, activity in, uh, we did a part of that in quarter one and we will see it in quarter two too. Uh, so I would think that a couple of quarters there might be uh, lower than, uh, you know, uh, their historical trajectory profitability that we'll have to work through. Mm -hmm. But uh, but there I think uh, we have uh, we have taken a substantial uh, uh, sort of uh, impact in quarter one which we articulated and it will remain for lumpy in quarter two also but quarter three onwards i think uh, i see a positive momentum in india middle east from there on okay another uh, troubled uh, sector of course has been the energy vertical this quarter in constant currency terms it's down by 4.1 percent but it's largely owing to the volatility in the market uh, uh, jatin as well as arbit both of you were pointing out uh, how the market uh, is now seeing slower decisions, uh, decision-making cycle. But uh, Jatin, do you expect that impact to get lesser by next quarter onwards, given the fact that there is some kind of revival expected in decision-making? Well, I would. We will watch it very carefully, Yutika. That's that's the comment I I have because uh, until the oil price is. Uh, is uh, still in a, in a zone which is not comforting for discretionary spend uh, to come back in that sector. Uh, there will be lumpiness in, in performance. Uh, you know, we have multiple times felt that it is bottoming out, mm. but, but we have remained in the range. So I would be cautious in, in hinting a, a, a secular recovery in that sector. But yes, the performance may remain lumpy and any incremental gains that may come we are quite confident of capturing that because all through this last few quarters we have consolidated our positions with our large customers and we therefore feel that we will have a uh, 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 we will have a great opportunity to capture any incremental spend that customer has to offer 
Okay, but uh, you know, let me come to Abid uh, in this before I uh, bring Saurav into the conversation. Abid, uh, do you believe that there is a need now, given the kind of volatility that there is in the energy market? Wipro has been leading versus its Indian peers uh, as far as the energy and utilities vertical is concerned. But because of the volatility, is there a case for change in strategy where you try to reduce the focus on energy? So you are absolutely right, Ritika. We are not depending purely on the energy prices to recover as our sole strategy for the ENU vertical and uh, we have uh, pursued an alternate strategy to diversify that vertical more so that uh, growth can return to that business unit and one early indicator of that today I announced a large deal that we have won for an airport in North America which is part of the uh, EPC vertical and that uh, is our execution on the strategy of diversifying the ENU vertical and while the energy prices come back and we see the discretionary spend returning, we also make it up with some of the other sub-verticals within the same SBU. And those investments are uh, starting to show some very early results. All right, uh, let's uh, get to Saurav then. Saurav, you've been waiting very patiently. You know, I always ask you this question. You've had space for inching up utilization. And to be fair, utilization has gone up uh, for this quarter, coming in at about 69.9% gross. Uh, what's the ban? Is there further uh, case for, or is, is there, could there be an upside to utilization in the next coming quarters? So, Kritika, let me take a step back and from overall supply chain, you know, mm -hmm give you a perspective on where it's critical the way we look at utilization for our margins as well on our hiring plans on our you know utilization uh, on a bench and as well as on our <coughs> overall utilization so hiring as you have said we have been saying that we will continue to hire people from campuses whom we have onboarded given offers earlier and we continue to onboard them but clearly the focus of the organization is moving towards reskilling people and more and more focus is coming there. Plan is to reskill about 20,000 odd uh, people in the digital technologies, and we are on plan to do that. On the attrition front, we have been working on a very narrow band of a one and a half person, one person over the last six quarters. This quarter, we have seen a s s increase of three percent. Very clearly, we had called this out earlier, and there are three reasons for that. A, we, you know, there was huge differentiated salary increases given. There have been disappointments. A performance appraisal process gets over, and the, hence that also takes into account. And traditionally, Q1, we see people going for higher studies. So all, all these three reasons put together has seen an increase. But I think it's only for this quarter. Next quarter, you will see a decrease in the attrition. So the third piece that is happening in very clearly is on the automation side. And you see that we have been focusing, and uh, we are releasing people at the bottom of the pyramid to do high value added jobs. So a combination of these people getting redeployed and have uh, jo uh, new requirements, are <coughs> hiring, uh, reskilling re people for newer technologies, very clearly we see utilization has headspace to improve further. We have improved by 2% this quarter and we see headspace, which for us is a clear lever from a margin perspective as we, as we go ahead. So overall, I feel that the entire supply chain from a people standpoint Will people supply chain, you will see that this trend continuing as we move forward. So how much is that headspace uh, in that case, sort of? We haven't called out a number, but if you compare, you know, we have always said that clearly we have a headspace of 3-4 percentage point more to go up. Okay, and as far as attrition is concerned, uh, given the fact that uh, this quarter was a seasonal week quarter, how much would you be able to bring down attrition next quarter? We don't guide for, you know, but as you said, Kritika, we have actually operated in a very narrow band and I, we hope to be back into that band very soon. Okay, let me quickly get to uh, Abid as well then. Abid, uh, you know, you're pointing out how the shift from energy or rather the wholesome focus on uh, financial services, healthcare is now paying results. And I agree, financial services has gone up by about 3.5%, uh, healthcare life sciences as well. But uh, w what, are the, what are the levers that you're putting in place to brace uh, from the volatility that is likely in the UK market thanks to Brexit? Uh, and what are the other margin levers that you will have to put in place to brace from the kind of slowdown that you may see in BFSI? So, Ritika, we have 27 verticals across all of our SBUs, the six segments that we report. Mm. And uh, what uh, we have uh, done is we have made sure as part of the strategic theme on 
being able to mine clients and provide domain-based consultative services that we have uh, all the 27 verticals which are cylinders to our engine fire and that kind of in a way mitigates if we see uh, softness in one vertical or the other which is the reality of business cycles and which will happen hmm. so same I would say for uh, the banking and financial services vertical which has been working well uh, even if there is a certain level of Brexit uh, related uh, slowdown that we see in the European capital markets area our investments in North American banking and other places uh, will mitigate that and hence uh, all of this is incorporated as part of our Q2 guidance uh, and overall margin levers are the traditional levers uh, that we have uh, which uh, you already know offshore increase uh, mm. utilization improvement span of control uh, all of those but the biggest margin lever that we see now is also the robotic automation and I'm very happy that you know we started doing this uh, early this calendar year and in Q1 uh, we were able to go to about 56 customers where we did the robotic deployment it is a very elaborate process where customers evaluate our robots uh, look at it from a cyber security perspective look at it from the compatibility uh, from their IT governance perspective and then give us uh, uh, permission to be able to deploy that and that has gone very well we've been able to release about 1100 people uh, and redeploy them into other engagements hmm. which essentially is a good margin lever uh, and uh, that along with all the traditional margin levers on top of it, uh, as you know, right. we've uh, made uh, right. a significant number of acquisitions. And uh, when these acquisitions come, they come with a cost model which is relatively different in, compared to what we traditionally operate in terms of our costs. And there is always opportunity to uh, apply some of our traditional levers uh, in those cost models as well, especially the low cost country delivery that we have expertise in and then bringing some of the engineering work on the platforms uh, that we see um, you know looking at some of the integration of sales and marketing costs and etc so there are a number of uh, margin levers which we will continue to uh, work on as we said that we have not shied away from investments and that has brought down our margins uh, in this quarter we have a little bit of uh, headwind next quarter again because the annual increase 50 percent of that impact comes traditionally in uh, q2 for wipro and uh, these levers will be acted which will uh, to a great extent mitigate that headwind and going into Q3 and Q4 it will uh, be accretive to our margins. So the full impact of the acquisitions could come in by Q3, Q4. Very tight on time up within one line. Uh, I'm sorry Ritika, I didn't understand the question. The full impact of the acquisitions that you have been making will come in by the third and fourth quarter. Can I say that? That is, that is right. The full impact of the operational Im improvements that we are driving okay. and it will be an ongoing journey Fair but the uh, revenue uh, has already come in uh, in this quarter in Q1 itself for all the acquisitions that we've already done. The margin improvement impact will come towards Q3 and Q4 as you rightly mentioned. All right, Abhay Jatin, uh, Saurabh, uh, always uh, nice to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining in with that detailed analysis uh, on Wipro's uh, earnings. Uh, so we are uh, in a sense, one big takeaway, as Abid was pointing out, he reiterated this uh, from uh, what he had said last quarter. By the end of the fiscal, uh, Vipro should be back to industry-leading growth, and that's something that the market will be waiting for. Back to you.